Alex, we're back. Yep, we're back. Still here. You're back specifically. How are you feeling? Much, much better. That's I, good. Yeah, uh, that was brutal. Honestly, you were sick last week, so uh, it was just Daniel and I, but we had a special guest, Alex Baumgartner. Go listen to that podcast. Daniel couldn't make it today. He's busy. So we just coincidentally, it's not every time we book a guest, one of <laughs> us is. So obviously, we're going to have someone next week, and I will be gone then. But Mike is back today with the USA hockey jersey. How are you, Mike? Nice jersey. Who's on the back of that? Oh, my Please God. Stop. Hey, my ground. This is God's country. We pray for rain. No, I've been, I've been yeah, a very big fan of God's country lately. Yeah. How's everyone doing? If we get copyright strike for that, I'm gonna we're gonna have a big problem here. People at work gave me gave me grief today for wearing this as well. As they should. You show up with a that's a Kessel jersey, right? Yes. A Don't Team USA Kessel jersey for those only listening to the audio. Is it signed? Yes. Oh, that's cool. You just got that for your birthday, didn't you? <sighs> yes, I did. I did. That's it was a nice. My dad tracked it down across the ends of the earth, but uh, yeah, no, I love it. So it's, it's going to be interesting to wear this, especially once the juniors rolls, rolls around, I'll probably get fired, but yeah, probably. Okay. And we won't, we, we can't have you on the show then. Uh, if you're going to wear that jersey, you don't want to get Daniel upset. Oh, come upset. on. I don't want to get, I, we don't want to get Daniel upset. Okay. Get out of here. He can wear anyway. his Team Canada jersey. I know he's. I know he knows a couple more things about Team Canada than, you know, all of us will in our lifetime. This well, that's is- impossible. You know everything about hockey, so. Okay, yeah, that's the one thing. Like he's competing. Like he probably. Yeah, he, yeah, he knows everything. Yeah. We miss you, Dan. Five minutes in, and we get that line. And all right, guys, we have a, a lot to talk about today. So yeah. first and foremost, it's a bit of a sad note to open on, but uh, yesterday, Tony Esposito passed away. Uh, one of the greatest goalies of all time, probably the greatest Blackhawks goalie of all time. Over 400 okay. wins, a hell of a legacy. So our condolences to the family there, first and foremost. Uh, De- Mike, I know you're, you're a big Esposito guy. Yeah. Uh, Tony Esposito, on top of having one of the coolest goalie masks ever was, I mean, you said it yourself, one of the best goalies to play the game, one of the best goalies who basically revolutionized how goalies play with his, his butterfly style. I mean, this guy, you know, it's, it sucks, you know, 78 years old, um, pancreatic cancer is just such a son of a gun, but um, yeah, I mean, what just, a classy Hall of Famer, one of the best to play the game, from uh, and a good Ontario boy. So, Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah, he is from the Sioux. Him really? And, uh, and yeah, yeah, and some of the best, some of the best brothers to ever play the game. You got him and Phil. Yeah. Crazy. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then moving on here, it, unfortunately, this also is something that's not very easy to talk about. Um, after we're going to talk about the Vander Kane now. After that, I think we have some more fun stuff to talk about, obviously. Signings, Masai Ujiri staying put in Toronto. All of Canada breathe a good sigh of relief after that happened. Um, so I just want to paint a little bit of a picture. So sorry, guys, if I have a bit of a rant here. I just want to make sure we set up this Vander Kane story properly. So I just want to rewind to 2019, because I think that's where a lot of the sort of story that's kind of started with the Vander Kane we know in 2019, there was the lawsuit from the Vegas casino or hotel. Sorry. Um, there was obviously his wife's miscarriage in 2019. Um, we know earlier in January this year that he declared chapter seven bankruptcy. There were debts north of $20 million. I think it was around 26. Um, and last week uh, it was made very public from his wife, Anna, that they're currently going through a divorce in the midst of this. It sounds like their house is being repossessed and all this terrible sort of stuff. Uh, They have a young daughter. Uh, They have, I I think, expecting a young son. Um, There was some personal stuff about maybe Kane not being, Avenger, I should say, uh, being around. Um, It's a very messy and very public divorce. I don't know. We don't like talking about, obviously, uh, this TMZ sort of stuff. And I'm not going to ask either of you to sort of talk about, you know, the personal stuff here. Um, we'll get to the hockey stuff in a minute and, and later on what this means for the Sharks and maybe trying to look at Vander Kane's future. Um, and we'll talk about the gambling stuff in the league's investigation in a second, though. I just wanted to kind of say first off, and 
again, before we keep going here is, um, and, you know, my, my parents are divorced. So I, 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 this is unfortunately though, a much more public and, and high scale sort of thing. So I want to say on the personal front, and this is all I will say personally, is that I hope at the end of this, the people who are taken care of first and foremost are the children. Um, because at the end of the day, they're the two people or, um, and, and of course, if you're the wife going through all this kind of stuff and you are pregnant, you worry about the unborn, ch- unborn child. So like, I want to just say there, I hope the kids are all right. Um, Cause this is uh it's messy. So amidst all this as well, uh, Anna Kane on, I believe her Instagram story had basically accused Evander of throwing games and betting on his own games, uh, which for obvious reasons is a big no, no in the national hockey league. Uh, the league very quickly started their own investigation here. Uh, Evander Kane obviously had a statement denying everything. He claimed his wife was mentally unstable. Um, now, We've we've talked about this a lot off of uh, oh, off of the podcast. Oh, what happened? We lost, we lost Mike. Oh no. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll pause it. Okay. All right. Sorry. Technical difficulties there. Anyway, so um, first off, your guys' sort of reaction here to the accusations of Kane's gambling, and sort of if we can have a discussion about a forward throwing a game. First off, um, starting with you, Mike, if you please. Yeah, I spoke about this before, and I spoke about it specifically with you guys. But, you know, obviously the allegations are terrible. Everything that she's alleging are some pretty some pretty bad things, if true, on Kane's part. Of course, nothing has been proven. Nothing has been. So I will always preface that. I will always, like, no matter how something ugly, how ugly something sounds, I always stick by innocent until proven guilty. Now, I do admit that Kane has a streaky past across different teams, like getting his tracksuit and thrown into the shower by Big Buff in Winnipeg or, I don't know, things in Buffalo. But, you know, he, he, this is a player with a history. When it comes specifically to throwing games, I'm not going to buy that, specifically to the fact that Evander Kane is a winger. Uh albeit not a really defensive-minded winger at all. He's not a two-way player. For a winger to throw a game just seems really impossible to me, unless he's making it blatantly obvious to the point where he's just passing the puck to these teams, like blatantly. And in that case, he would get benched, he would get scratched, he would get looked at by the NHL. I don't don't think that's – sorry. I don't think it's possible by – a forward, especially a winger in the least defensively minded uh, position to do. If he was a goalie, if he was a referee, of course he has a significant advantage in doing that. But this is also the guy that led the team in scoring, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but had like his best career year for sure. And, you know, um, if he's betting on his own games, if he's betting on other games, that's awful, of course. If he's betting on hockey games or if he's betting on his own games, that's terrible. But, yeah, I just think it's it's ugly. It's really, really ugly to get that out because my thought isn't for a Vander Kane. He's a grown-up. He's got to deal with these kinds of allegations. And, you know, apparently he's partying in Europe. I don't know. But um, my biggest thing is for – you know, his family, his daughter, his unborn child for this all to be publicized. It's, it's ugly, you know, that's kind of not a legacy, but it's definitely something publicized about your family that you would never want. Right. So I don't know. What what do you guys think? Alex, Alex or Adam, what do you guys think? Um, I know you're throwing it. I'm not, I'm not delegating tasks here, Adam. I know you you said, no, 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 go go ahead, Alex. I have some stuff to say afterwards, but no, no, Alex, of course, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just, I I think it's, it's a really messy look just overall for a lot of parties involved, Um, mainly the league and Evander Kane. And like just some of the things that, that are coming out afterwards now, and and by the way, like Kane isn't helping himself. Uh, I think he posted something. An Instagram picture? No, I it's ain't like, helping him at all. Like how? What's what's going through your mind to say, 
hey, these are all the accusations that are coming out. And your first thought was to post that picture with the shush symbol or the shush emoji. It's like, really? Like that's, that's the first thing. So for context, there was, I, I saw two photos. One was him in like hockey gear. Uh, and then the yeah. second one was him at what looked like a really fancy restaurant. And like, there's like a waiter behind him, like cutting up this like table side dish. And he has this big smirk on his face. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest that that actually really annoyed me because it, he, here's the thing is all of this being put into the public air. Um, like again, your family's going to see that one day. Like uh, if, if I can say, if that was my father, that would, that would stay with me for a long time. The photo? He knows what he's doing. Oh yeah. 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 yeah the yeah. photo. Yes. Yes. That that's, it, it's just, and, and again, Evander came before there's that very famous photo of him in Vegas holding a wad of cash. Yeah. There's like, like for example, like what's, we don't want to take sides here. But there, there is smoke with Evander Kane. So looking back, and I'll try and be fair to him here about about th- like I think one of you mentioned when we were FaceTiming the uh, was it yesterday yeah. that um, if he was I could instead seeing like agree with one of your points here instead of him throwing a game betting against the Sharks against a team like Vegas, which any sane person would say the Sharks are going to get destroyed because the Sharks are not a good team. Now looking at Evander Kane's individual numbers. He had 49 points in 56 games played. That's a 0.875 points per game, which is a career high for him, up from, I think, 0.7. His Corsi and his other underlying numbers are actually pretty good this year, too. But again, because of the smoke, it says something that the league right away, and money is obviously a factor because they don't want to lose the whole... They were, like Sports gambling is going to make them a lot of money. However, it's just... It's hard to believe that on the ice, at least, that he would be able to do that. Um, so looking sort of forward here is uh, some other stuff with Evander Kane. He's taken a voluntary leave of absence from the Hockey Diversity Alliance. Uh, Kevin Kurz of The Athletic had an article reporting that Kane um, has been breaking San Jose Shark team rules, like being late to meetings. And what's really a problem is apparently it's starting to uh, rub off on younger players. And uh, what's a big red flag there is for years. Uh, and it, I think it helped to defend the Kane acquisition in the first place was that the Sharks had a very, very strong room. Now, over the past couple of years, guys like Joe Thornton and that have, have left the organization. Uh, and maybe those couple of years where Patrick Marlowe stepped away and sort of came back in free agency, maybe that's had an effect. And also, apparently, teammates do not even want Evander Kane back. And the Sharks were trying to trade him earlier in the offseason. Can I just read some quotes Sure. from the Kevin Kerr's article? Uh, This one was from today, actually. So maybe I'm missing earlier ones, but uh, this is from one source. Guys were going into Doug's Doug. um, Why can't I remember his name? What's the GM? Doug Wilson. Doug Wilson. Guys were going into Doug's office all year long uh, saying Kane had to go dot, dot, dot. All Doug would say is all teams have locker rooms issues, which just isn't, which just isn't true. Not the teams that win anyways. Uh, the Sharks ignored everything, said an NHL agent who represents at least one player on the team. The team turned a blind eye. Uh, nobody in that room is a fan of him. Bugner likes him because he's a good player, because he genuinely is. But the off-ice stuff is just too much at this point. Mm-hmm. So here's a, a bit of a problem. I'm looking on cap friendly right now. Obviously, Evander Kane has four more years left at $7 million. He has a modified no trade clause. A uh, player submits a list of three teams he can be traded to. Uh, I didn't know he had that much trade protection. Oh, yeah. How in they the world? They locked him up pretty know? good. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, that obviously why he is um, probably not very easy to trade him to right now, but... Again, um, for the sake of the family, I hope it gets sorted out. Um, you, at the same time, from a human point of view, would like Evander Kane to straighten his life out because he, he has a gambling addiction. That That is a fact. Um, but for the sake of his family, I, I hope that this is sorted out. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on Evander Kane or shall we move on? You know, yeah, I just quickly, you know, gambling is an addiction. I will say, yes, he, he's got a history of being – a locker room cancer, if we're throwing that name out there. He's got a, a history of, you know, attitude issues. 
But at the end of the day, gambling is a real addiction. This guy, you're on cap friendly right now, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Look at his career earnings. Ooh, I will do that right now. Uh, 26 okay. million, I believe. Uh, hold on a minute. Where exactly do I see career earnings? Uh, you can see 55. 55. So this guy has squandered $55 million. Mm-hmm. More than in, that. More than that. More than that. And yeah, because this guy's also endorsed by Bauer. This guy's got different sponsorship deals. Like this guy has squandered what like over a uh, hundred, like, sorry, over 50, like almost 60, whatever, how many millions of dollars at this point. Plus the 27 million extra dollars he's in debt. Yes. So all of that. NHL agents, their job is not just to make you the most money throughout your career. Their job is to make sure because most of the time you're not that well educated to tell you the truth. If you're going, if you're going, if you're in junior, you're coming out with a high school diploma or a high school diploma half the time to go play professional hockey. Um, and same thing in the NCAA. Let's be real; these guys aren't focusing on what they're studying before they go. Um, but an NHL agent's job is to make sure that that money that you're getting, that you're earning is all going towards, you know, that you're going to be able to retire as well. That it's going to whatever it is, RSPs. I know Brian Burke talked about the, the tax plan that you have in Canada. Um, and just, you know, without getting into all the technicalities, but this guy is legitimately apparently squandered every penny on gambling. And although he is, you know, allegedly a toxic guy, you know, you want to do to figure it out. So he's not, you know, who knows where he plays next year, but you don't want this guy to end up just on the streets after being on the ice for a pretty good organization. Right. Yeah. Um, by the way, in, in reference to some of the money he's lost, he is halfway through a deal right now. That's valued at $49 million, I should say. Um, and, and some difficulties, by the way, in trading him. Uh, a lot of it is $7 million salary this year, five, six, four. There's not a lot of signing bonuses in there, but uh, still, like there is money still to be paid on that deal, which in the current climate of the National Hockey League, um, maybe not the easiest situation, um, nope. easy steal to move, especially with that trade protection. Um, all right, though, um, now we get to move on to some legitimate news, and it, it has been a crazy busy week. It was very quiet our last episode. In fact, the Darnell Nurse stuff hadn't even broken, uh, and then it was the day after the episode went out that, oh, okay, here we go, Darnell Nurse. We're not going to be there quite yet, um, because first off, the New Jersey Devils have continued to actually have a pretty solid off season here. Um, first off, they they suck. Often, <laughs> first off, they improved their goaltending. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood, we know, has a new partner in Jonathan Bernier, Dougie Hamilton to really solidify that defense. And now they get the even strength scoring king in Tomas Tatar. Uh, a two-year deal worth $9 million. That AAV is 4.5. Uh, really, you could see Thomas Tatar being plopped on that line with Jack Hughes. And that's just going to be all the even strength scoring you can need. Like Tatar is going to hit 25. Easy, I could see. I really like the deal. I'm biased here. And say what you want about his playoff performance. I don't think the Devils are going to be contenders anytime no, soon. No. But I, I think this is a really solid ad. I really want to hear Lord, what Mike Lord Tuna. About it. Lord Tuna of House Tatar. Yes. Score of goals. First of his name. Nice. Um... Yeah, dude, like if he can, you know, actually play instead of getting scratched, that'd be good. I mean, he, uh, you know me, I hate the Devils. Um, Really? Thanks, Alex. Yes, yes. (laughs) Your sarcasm is noted. Um, Name name somebody more sarcastic than Alex. Anyways. You can. So, yeah, exactly. So, I mean... This is a team, yeah, I mean, they've been crapped the last few years, but they've been shoring up slowly. I mean, uh, who do they add as a goal? Who's their backup now? Jonathan Bernier. Yes, Joe. No. Really? He went to New Jersey? Yeah, he did. Yes. Okay, anyways, they're shoring up their goaltending now so that they can have somebody behind Blackwood So, because Blackwood's still figuring it out. They go out and get big-name defensemen, in Ryan Graves for a good price because they needed that because or, or, sorry because Colorado needed to get rid of him or risk losing him for nothing in the expansion. Uh, they obviously get the big fish in the sea with Dougie Hamilton and now they're shoring up their scoring with Lord Tuna of House Tatar, 
when I call up Lord Tuna of House Tatar. I think they're, I hate to say it, I think they're actually making some good moves. I mean, Jack Hughes looked ridiculously good for a period of time last year before he slowly fizzled out, but I only think he's going to get better. And unfortunately, I think, I don't think they're a contender quite yet. Um, but they're definitely like, there's not going to be any easy games against them. I mean, now that you got some scoring, you already had some big guys back there. You have one of the best shooters from the point in Dougie Hamilton. And yeah, I think the Rangers are definitely going to have a heck of a time against them. It's not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alex, let's not also forget they added some other defensemen like Jonas Siegenthaler earlier in the year. Uh, They really liked him too. So they, they are, they're all right. Yeah, I saw I saw a couple people com- or a few people comparing what they did this off season to what they did a couple of years ago, or a few years ago now, where they added PK, they added uh, Nikita Gusev, and I feel like I'm missing someone else. But either way, like I don't think it's the same situation. Like they added Dougie without giving up a single asset. They added Jonathan mm-hmm. Bernier without without giving up a single asset. Uh, Sure, they had to trade, I think it was a second and a prospect to Colorado for Ryan Graves. But at the same time, you have plenty of them this time around. Like you're you're better set up now than you were three years ago or however many years ago, four years ago. And what I like about guys like Ryan Graves and Dougie Hamilton is that they're going to pave the way for guys like Ty Smith, who's really coming into his, his own emergence. Mm-hmm. I mean, PK is going to be making his nine million to be on the third pairing basically, but you know, he's only got a couple not that much time left on that deal and there you have it. So they're in a they're in a position to just keep getting better. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. PK's up next year, isn't he? Yeah. 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 So, so you know I saw people kind of being a bit critical of, of the money that Tatar and Bernier got. And you know what I thought like you know what Bernier in the past has been in his worst positions when he's had to be the guy. So, and once he was, and obviously, like, he when? Was Detroit. I, like he was a leaf. Yeah. Um, like, you know what that he wasn't like platoon systems are such a thing. And with Blackwood, I think it's going to really help. Not to mention Tatar is like, that's a 25 goal scorer on a good year. Like that is a guy that is going to help you take that next step. So I, and again, with PK being gone, these are, and by the way, Bernier and Tatar are both only two year deals. I think it's going to be something you're going to forget about. Again, the only time Tatar is going to be scratched is in the playoffs. So I have mean, <laughs> 82 games to enjoy him uh, before then. If he gets to the finals, though, no, he's just not going to. He's not. Gonna. I, I don't actually mind the overpayment if you consider it an overpayment for Jonathan Bernier, just because they tried this last year with Crawford. Crawford obviously ended up retiring. Like, and he boned him. He boned him. He, he put him in a difficult situation for sure. But like I would have, considering like they still have twelve million dollars in cap space, they have nothing really else to do unless they want to add more guys. I'm fine with handing out the extra five hundred, six hundred k to pay Jonathan Bernier or, or however much you think is an overpayment to make sure that he is going to be there come training camp. Mm-hmm. What's really funny too is um, I'm pretty sure with this deal, Thomas Tarr actually makes a lesson he did in Montreal. Uh, what did he make in Montreal? I want to say it was around five million. Yeah, he makes four and a half. Yeah, so he he definitely took a. No, no, I don't think he took a discount. It was probably one of the better offers he was getting. I really, I'd like to know because I was thinking about it. You know what? Tavares obviously got a ton of attention because it was basically he was hand like put hand in hand with the Leafs that entire year. He was with the eye like that last season in the Islanders, I should say. Yeah. But it felt like we didn't get a lot on Panarin. It feels like. If I can, Panarin, 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 whatever you want to say. Panarin, yeah, okay. Panarin, listen. Panarin, Panarin. 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 Like it's like you're trying to pronounce it in the Russian, but not. Panarin, you like Russian? Because in, in Russian, it's Panarin. Panarin, <laughs> but Artami <laughs> Panarin. Panarin. Now, you said Artami. Artami, I'm so yeah. Done with this man. Okay, just end this what show. is I'm the going point? Now. Okay, bye, Mike. Okay, uh, well, so <laughs> what I'm saying is, and it feels like Dougie. It was like, okay, so we're gonna report that he's being a, a, like allowed to talk to other teams by Carolina, yeah. but then that was it. Then it's like, oh, he's going to the Devils. I'm a little disappointed in Canadian media for not really talking about it. Like, why exactly? We knew exactly Tavares was gonna come home. 
We knew that at least Panarin wanted to play in a big city. Do we know why Dougie chose New Jersey? No idea. No I, idea. I feel like as as probably the best defenseman to hit free agency since Chara back in the day. I feel like we should have had a bit more attention on him. Not gonna lie. No, you're not wrong. I think another thing too is I don't. You know, it's I. It's taken a while for Dougie Hamilton to kind of find his place because, mm-hmm. like, believe it or not, Dougie Hamilton has been around for a while. Like, he, he was drafted in 2011. Keep that in mind. And you know, he's bounced back and forth between different teams. He started in Boston. He was in Calgary, then Carolina. And you know, there are some rep- like I don't. I don't obviously know this, but there are, you know, people who have said that there are sometimes issues with him in a locker room. I don't know what those are. I don't want to label him at all, but I think it was, it was in like, not instrumental, but it was part of why he's kind of moved in and around different places until now he's, you know, finally getting that big deal that he's worth. So I don't know. I think, I don't know why he chose New Jersey of all places, but um, I hope this just means that now for his career, he's got like some real stability, you know, just as a, as a player, as a person, like you see that with Robin Leonard, the guy was bouncing around for so long and he had his issues obviously way different, but um, yeah. So who knows? I mean, hopefully he can lock it down for real now in, uh, in, uh, in little Italy. Exactly. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, listen, it was a very worrying time in the world of Toronto basketball with the Raptors. Uh, it felt like everyone we had on this podcast had, had to do like Donald and. Uh, I was going to say, where's Donnie? Uh, we should. Uh, you know what? I was thinking about, man, should we have someone on? Um, but uh, stuff was going on. Stuff was going on. Anyway, we will. It's a long summer still. We got time before the season starts. It's almost, uh, the summer's almost over. Stop it. No, it's only the 11th. Stop, We've stop. got time. we got <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks. Alone. It's like those commercials, like, we're going back to school. Like, no, I'm, we're not. It's like, what are you doing? Why would you play these commercials now? It's insulting. Like, time to go to Walmart, do some shopping. Like the middle of July, Staples already has their back to school sale. Like, okay, yeah, there. that's just insane. Get out of here. Yeah, but you know what? Dear parents, don't take your kids there the last week before school. Like, get ahead of that, please. That's otherwise, literally what I've done all my life. Yeah, well, in- <laughs> And it's probably always busy. and It shows. There's, 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 yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. Anyway, uh, so so the man who has been titled the architect of the Raptors championship, Masai Ujiri, is staying. Uh, I don't think the details have been made very clear, to be honest. Uh, we know yeah, it's a big he, position bump. So basically, he, he is now the vice chairman and president of the Toronto Raptors. There was some what? word apparently that he may have gotten some position to do with ownership, some stake. Apparently that's not the case, but he is around. Apparently there was word earlier in the year that whenever he was signed, he would be the highest paid executive in basketball. So Good. honestly, he might be the highest paid executive in North America, probably. I don't I know mean, what he would be compared to soccer, he, the, but... The plan was like there was going to be a big bidding war for him, regardless, because of uh, go to the Knicks. Well, not just them. The Washington Wizards basically wanted him to do to bring him in to do exactly what he's done with the Raptors, build them from the ground up. Because the Wizards suck. <laughs> um, and then New York is actually doing well now. Unfortunately, that means Jim Dolan is focused on the Rangers. <laughs> but um, no, I mean Masai. Look what he's built. Look at the culture he's built of, of, of basketball, not just in Toronto, but in Canada, um, bringing a championship, putting this team on the map. And, and also just like in the community, the Western Africa kind of projects that he works on, the, the, community, the community projects, the community like initiatives that he drives. Um, I've said this before. I think Masai Ujiri is one of the biggest figures in, ba- of, in basketball in the entire world without even having to be on the court playing. And so for him to, to stay is amazing. For him to acknowledge this place as home as he did in that video is is amazing. I mean, this was not the ideal offseason. This wasn't the ideal season for the Raptors. They will be 
better again soon. Uh, this has been a hard off season, obviously, but I mean, the bright spot is that they didn't talk about this that much during the year. I, I honestly don't, I don't think I saw enough people talking about why hasn't Masai signed yet. Yeah. Um, do you know why though? Because it's purely a, that's purely a hockey thing. I get yeah. the importance of Masai, yeah. but that is purely a hockey thing. Yeah. Where the, all anyone cares about it, whether people admit it or not, all people care about in hockey is contracts on yeah. hockey Twitter. That's all they talk about. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I'm talking about just the sports world in general. I don't even yeah. think um, I can speak more for TSN, but I didn't see that much from that. Okay, why are you yeah, shaking your shot. head? Big shot. Get out of here. <laughs> but yeah, like I didn't see that much coverage and kind of why isn't Masai signed yet? Bobby Webster signed. Where's Masai? So yeah. It's almost also you could see it's like he got his guys done first. It was, I feel like, and I don't know if it was more, because obviously it feels like the Raptors are often an afterthought in the world of basketball uh, because they're the only the Canadian team. Stephen I wonder A if hates the Raptors. The, yeah, oh, they all, everyone does. Uh, but I, I feel, I wonder if it was just a thing of like the more of like ESPN just kind of didn't care enough about it or they were just kind of really saying, now nah, he'll leave. He's gone. He's out of there. And maybe that's why there wasn't as much talk about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's just a more focus on the season thing. It's it's uh, it's basketball, man. Completely different piece. But I, 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 I wish we were more like that in hockey. To be honest with you, I think in the U.S. there was this idea that he was going to leave. But I think in Canada there was more of a he's staying. Panic. Uh, he's not not even. I think people thought he was going to stay in yeah. Canada, and that's why there I thought was, he was like stay. no discussion about it. I'm but happy that he stayed because I thought he was going to stay. Yeah. And I know everything about basketball. So. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, right, add, that, I'll add that to the <laughs> I've just seen uh, the, the NHO's worst top 10 worst contracts. I'm guessing that's I did. Don't, spo- don't spoil it. I'm going to read it later. I, I, I've i just Don't seen spoil it. Don't gonna, spoil I'm it. Gonna read it. Don't spoil it. Drew Doughty's probably number one, though. I know. He is number one. They already spoiled it on the on the oh. thing. They're like. Well, uh, now you've the, spoiled and, it for us. Thank you. Okay, you know what? That's not my fault. You t- you were just like, don't spoil it. And it you were says like, yeah, on the, on the notification, more. Drew Dowdy retains his title with the worst, but the Sharks are coming for him. Bibbidi boobidi boppity. Why are you so Hey, come on now. All right, let's, let's keep it in line, boys. Come on. <laughs> the, uh, the New York Islanders, however, more news regarding to the Metro. Who cares about uh, them? I, I do. They had a very uh, James Dolan. <laughs> I remember. Oh, 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 hey, hey, oh wow! Just you a know, fact. Me, just a fact. Well, last off season, I remember we were talking about man, the Islanders are going to be in trouble here, and nope. then like Lou Lamorello slowly but surely fixed their cap situation, and they sign a very very good contract. They lock up Adam Pellick for eight years. The contract is worth forty six million dollars. The AAV is five point seven five. With the way contracts are looking in defense nowadays, Maron, with all the big uh, <laughs> deals going on, honestly, it may be one of the best. I am. I am. Um, the best value deals in the league for one off, if one of, if not the best defensive defenseman in the National Hockey League. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Your favorite team. Oh, Mike, the scumbag Isles. Um, Etobicoke's very own Adam Pellick, Bishop Allen alumni. Uh, honestly, Good move. Very good move. It just comes as, you know, the pending cap crunch comes for those Islanders. I mean, 5.75 million for the foreseeable future for Pelic, I feel like is like, I, I honestly could see teams giving him six and a half to seven. So that's a pretty good one, especially in a flat cap world. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, the Islanders still got a couple of things to shore up. They still got to get Sizikis locked up. They still got to a couple of things to figure out, but we all know how Lou Lamorello is the quietest man on the planet and will never let anything get out. So I wonder how long they were actually working on this as compared to when it was actually done. Do you know what I mean? I imagine. I I listened to an interesting uh, episode of 31 Thoughts, 32 Thoughts, that episode. Yeah. Um, And one funny comparison they made is that 
honestly, Friedman was talking about how um, Lou Lamorello has just made deals, but just ha- like they just like he just stuffs it in his cabinet and just waits like God knows how long to announce it. Yeah, this um, is, I forgot. This is probably done. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot Absolutely. which unnamed player Absolutely. he did that for. Uh, I forgot which player it wasn't. I forgot who it wasn't. Corey Schneider was one last year. Yeah, but I mean, like, and he's points all signs like guys like Casey Sezikis, who's a big part of that team, one of the best fourth liners in the game, probably like their will their their version of William Carrier, um, and yeah, it's just, I just I it, it makes me wonder. You know, how long was Pelic basically signed for already at this point? Probably because I feel like at this point, yeah, I just now I wonder what they're going to do because now the Islanders, Islanders are going to actually finally hit that cap crunch without even having any true superstars outside of Matthew Barzell on that team. I think so. Um, he did Friedman not also say that he thought Parise, Palmieri, and Sizikis were all staying in New York? Or did, going yeah. to Parise. they're all yeah. just probably or Parise going to, yeah, that they're yes, all probably yeah. secretly done and there's done. in the drawer. Yeah. Also, they have to put yeah. Johnny Boy. Johnny Boychuk is not playing anymore. Is that correct? No, he's he's so done. He, that's his six eye injury, dollars. unfortunately. Yeah. So that's another six million dollars on LTIR. <laughs> so that, yeah. that's about eighteen million dollars in cap space. If I could do that the helps. math correctly. Big math guy. Big math yeah. guy. You know, I'm I'm thinking, Alex. Who needs Adam Pellick when you've locked up Patrick Nemeth for three years? <laughs> <laughs> the dude, we are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that long a deal. Two point five million. Oh wow, that's a. You just you just threw I him under you. the bus there. You threw like him I, under like the bus you. there. That was like I hate you. No, oh, like that was that that was seriously so, that was so uncalled for. That was so mean. <laughs> had to i had to all right uh now we all okay uh, we're gonna talk about darnell nurse now okay i at at some point during this segment i'm gonna (laughs) anonymous frog i am okay you're okay somebody i have an anonymous blobfish for some reason in our google doc so that's me probably at some point i'm gonna try and be nice to ken holland here i can't say the same for what alex is gonna be here in a second however um, Darno Nurse has been extended by the Oilers. The deal kicks in next season, actually. Uh, it will make him the fifth highest paid, or the, he'll have the fifth highest cap in amongst defensemen, that being nine, $9.25 million, 74 total is the entirety of the deal. Um, I do want to ask, however, what were the Oilers going to do about this deal? Considering what happened to the defenseman market this year, or the market with defensemen, I like you had to do it, right? It's the worst decor I've seen. It's so bad. I've I'm not gonna rip it again. So I'll, I'll I've given Edmonton their crap. Like you're right. Like th- there was nothing Ken Holland couldn't do. Like Darnell Nurse, Zach Ru- and Zach Ransky should be going and kissing the hand of Seth Jones and the Chicago Blackhawks, because there's no way these guys that those two in particular would have gotten this money if it wasn't for Seth Jones. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was the Oilers had their hands tied behind their back. Like, what are you going to do? Let Darnell worse Darnell nurse walk to free agency. And then what? (laughs) Then your defense core is worse than when it's, when you started. Uh, Breaking news, by the way, the Panthers just signed Sam Reinhart. Oh, really? Three years, six point five AAV. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, that's Hit the breaking news alarm. Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know who just finished recording a podcast too? I don't know if you saw. No, that. really? Yeah, yeah. Who? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Steve Dangle. Oh, yeah, but that always happens to him. I, I know that's why it's like funny. straight up. That always happens to him, and he always mentions it. Yeah. Uh, what do you? Is it an overpayment? What do you think? I you right. think it's an overpayment. Like, wait, wait, Dar- Darnell Nurse, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 obviously. 9.25 is Correct. crazy. Man, um, I love Jeff Petrie's contract now. Like, that guy is in six, and Nurse wow, is in nine? Crazy. Like, yeah. you think of it, like, what happened there? Well, you know what? A lot of it, I think, also comes with the point that, like, you got to do that in Edmonton, despite the fact that you have the best 
two players, sorry, the best player in the world. Um, in the top 10. Also, in the top 10. It's also Edmonton. Fair. <laughs> like, Darnell Nurse definitely is riding. I don't know if he cares about success or if he cares about money more, but, like, who knows? I Sorry, like, this is the first year where it's finally being brought up that in a year's time, we can see McDavid and Drysaddle actually want to jump ship finally. But, I haven't seen that narrative come out until finally this year. But the thing and, is, they were working on a deal beforehand. I know, but I'm just saying that you gotta you gotta overpay to stay in places like Edmonton, like mm-hmm. Columbus, like uh, you know. And this is the same guy that you've seen uh, analytics geeks say he's terrible analytically, and people tar him with the the name awful defender. Uh, I I don't know. I don't. <laughs> that's a tough soak. I feel nine two five million is is a tough soak to keep him, especially after you just rolled out the welcome wagon for guys like Zach Hyman and how much they paid Tyson Berry. So, so, so before before you go there, so I, I think like just quickly going back to what Alex was saying there about the the deal is clearly Ken Holland at, at some point realized he's got to lock up his core because they were working on a shorter term deal apparently, and then they decided to go the full eight years. And then that's where the big term came into. So the way I'm, I've kind of looked at this, right? And it's going to be kind of unpopular here is no, if you like the deals or not, what Ken Holland went out and did was he locked up his core. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, obviously. Barry, uh, better or for worst. Uh, again, led defenseman in scoring last year. There, there's If you can shelter him properly, that's a good move in my opinion. But then the problem comes with, okay, then you have Cody Ceci who you paid far too much money to, Darnell Nurse, Hyman, seven years. And I know everyone, the back half of that deal, that's every eight-year deal. Mm-hmm. Hyman will be good for their, those first three years. See, and the big problem here is the, those like last four years are not Edmonton's problem right now because, as we just mentioned, they have to win now. Right. But- now, again, and that's what their thing is, is because you don't, no matter what these two players will say in the press conference, Drysaddle and McDavid are going to be mad. Their patience 100%. has to be wearing thin, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing for me is, is they were working on a three to four year deal until Seth Jones signed his deal. And less than what, two weeks later, you saw, like, was there no... Did Darnell Nurse walk into Ken Holland's office and say, you have to offer me eight years at $9.25 million or else I'm not coming back? Like, why? Why? The thing for me is not you had to sign Darnell Nurse, but why didn't you just why didn't you actually try to negotiate with him rather than give him this contract? They also the, what's terrible is they, they decided to go for a max deal term wise when he had a crazy high shooting percentage for his career average. That's what worries me a lot is now you can obviously maybe a progression with a player in development wise, but however, when your shooting percentage just shoots up like that, there's a problem there, especially for He's obviously an offensive defenseman. That's not arguable, but is he like, think of who, what defenseman have gotten around 9 million. Dougie's worth it. Roman Yossi is a Norris Trophy winner. I don't agree with him having that Norris here's, Trophy. Here's the thing, too. Uh, um, it's just the way the league has gone. I mean, look at the way the market has been set for players of this caliber now, offensive defensemen of this caliber now. It's just you, just you can't really do anything when the market is set. Look at oh. Wierenski. Look at Seth Jones. Look at all these guys getting overpaid quite a bit to be Offensive defenseman. Here's like, yeah, sorry. Here's no, my, you know what? Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Please. Here's, Just, here's my thing is so, I, so to add on to Adam, he also, you, the team just traded away the defense partner that he actually worked really well with in Ethan Bear. And now he's either going to be playing next to Tyson Berry, Cody Cece, or Evan Bouchard. Or, Are you like, excited to see what, Darnell Nurse? And Cody CC. Like, Don't forget right about there. Duncan Keith, guys. And Don't Duncan forget about Keith, Duncan yeah, Keith. That's true. But why, like, again, why wouldn't you just wait 
to see is this the actual Darnell nurse that we have is like the, the Darnell nurse we saw this year, is that Darnell nurse or are we going to get something else next year when we trade him the partner he works well with and are going to leave him next to Cody CC or Tyson Berry and Chris Russell and Chris Russell. Yes. And one thing that they're betting on too, is the fact that, yeah, you got to admit though, that he has improved basically every year. He's been Correct. So I think, I'm, I'm not just saying that justified. That's one hell of a gamble for a guy to improve year by year to live up to a contract like that. But, I mean, yeah. I don't think it's a matter of is this the Darnell Nurse now that we're paying for as opposed to, you know, they're betting on him just to steady improve. Uh, that's tough, man. That's tough. Um but yeah, I mean, well, the Edmonton Oilers are tough, man. <laughs> they've made their bed. And by the way, I, I I think we can all agree there's still a lot of issues with their bottom six. Um, yeah, they have no depth. And not to mention uh, the goaltending. Uh, that is a, that's still a big problem. Uh, a the very Savior's big problem. back for two years. Yeah. You know what's really oh funny? Is I, I was looking, because we're going to talk about goaltenders. What the f- here. What? What's up? Oh. I think we lost him. Oh my! Well, hopefully he'll be back in like a second here. Just quickly, yeah. uh, I think that's a fair deal for Sam Reinhardt, by the way. Especially yeah, who can play center. Less than seven million, not bad. No, not bad at all. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Like I, I saw Freeman just said um, tweeted. Couple teams told me Reinhardt had an excellent arb case, so don't be surprised by this number. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, and by the way, I, I, so I'm looking at goal saved above average. Yeah. Freaking Mike Smith was fourth last year. What happened there? UC Soros was fifth. But this is at minimum 30 games played. And it's from moneypuck.com. Um, all right. Wow. Mike's saying his laptop sucks. He wasn't worried. You should be worried, my friend. Um, oh, and Nicky connecting via audio. Okay. Um, so as Mike is reconnecting right here, um, we can talk about the Olympics for a little bit here. First off, uh, John Cooper head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, the longest termed head coach in the league right now, a couple Stanley Cups there, um, has been named head coach of Team Canada for the upcoming Olympics. Uh, By the way, we will apparently know about if the NHL are going by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. I think that originally came from Friedman or Sarah Valley. Sorry, I don't have As as reported to you per Mike. Thanks. Per, uh, as in you sent us the tweet. Okay. Um, No, no, as in I told you on FaceTime. Oh, you told us on FaceTime. Oh, yeah. That's that's very kind of you. I, um, the I know assistants, everything. anyway, the assistant coaches. Oh for my ex- god! What? What the? F- what? Oh, well, okay. I hope he knows. He knows he didn't actually freeze there, and he just kind of. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll pa- Johnny, pause. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll be back in a second. Okay, you can tell that um, that Mike's internet is not a fan of Team Canada's lineup here because his anyway your laptop because he just clearly doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, the assistant coaches to John Cooper from the Bruins, uh, head coach Bruce Cassidy from the New York Islanders. No surprise here. Uh, Barry Trotz wouldn't be surprised if he was that team named head coach. But when he went back to back cups, uh, the one I'm not a massive fan of, uh, Peter DeBoer, who in a series was out coached by an interim head coach. And the interim coach is interim with Luke Richardson and Dominic D. Sharp. Yeah, not fantastic. I, I don't like DeBoer being there. I, but I think I, I think we can all kind of be honest here is maybe DeBoer wouldn't be there if the Blackhawks situation wasn't public. Is Joe Quindle on this stuff? Yes. Yeah. Especially because the Panthers had a great year. Yeah. And, and Joe Quindle is arguably probably the second best coach in history. Behind Bowman, as I in think Scotty. The, yeah, I think the Panthers could have had a horrible year, and he still would have been behind the bench. But now that yeah. it came out, for them to go off of their guys, it takes a lot. It does. It does. Good for good for Bruce Cassidy, by the way. Really like that coach. Yeah. In, it's gonna be really funny after the last series of about crying about the officiating, and he has to work with Barry Trotz again. <laughs> I'm just I'm surprised there's no Mike Babcock. No, I, I'm not. Or <laughs> Andre Tournier. Why Tournier? Because he was the world junior guy? Or or Ducharme? Are you just listing off coaches? No. I, th- I, th- I think you're <laughs> looking at world junior head coaches. Yeah, I know. 
otherwise, I don't know why you're looking at the Coyotes. And, Craig, Craig Berube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, another hockey camp. Travis Green. That wouldn't have been a bad shout, but he hasn't won anything, right? That's fair. He's had At least, you know, DeBoer's game. been to a cup final. Cassidy, the Bruins cup final. Trots, Dave, Dave Hagstall. No, not Dave uh, Hagstall. What Hagstall. are you reading off of? A- A.V., Alain Vigneault. I think he's just, yeah, okay. Anyway. I realize um, there's so many. What? What are you what doing? Else? Are what you else? listing Canadian-born coaches? What the fuck? Oh. Oh, we um, lost him. I think, he, okay, yeah. Good thing he didn't finish that word, otherwise yeah. we'd be in trouble. Then I'd have more stuff to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, in the same breath. Yeah. As we wait for Mike to come back. Uh, this is a bit more of a serious note. I won't read the full article because go read people's stuff. Uh, Rick Westhead from uh, uh, TSN, who's done an amazing job covering the whole Blackhawks situation, uh, reported, uh, quote, a lawyer for a former Chicago Blackhawks player has asked the U.S. Center for Safe Sport to investigate Blackhawks and U.S. Olympic men's hockey team GM uh, Stan Bowman for allegedly covering up the sexual abuse of two former Blackhawks players. A oh, Chicago swear lawyer. I miss. Sorry, I'm back. I'm setting up the the, the Bowman stuff. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. One last thing. Yeah. You know who was snubbed? Dom Duchamp. Gerard Gallant. Yes, yes, yes. That's actually a good one. Yeah, that's quite fair. Yeah. To the point. Sorry. Or Sorry. he he was gonna have it, but they called him a cab, and Pete DeBoer was the one who picked him up. Anyway, um, but moving moving on, serious topic with with, um, with the Blackhawks. So continuing the Rick Westhead article. By the way, shout out to Rick Westhead. What a great job he's done um, past couple of months of this Blackhawks stuff. Uh, Chicago lawyer Susan Loggins requested an investigation of Bowman's alleged actions in an email on Thursday to Dennis Lovato, an intake coordinator at Safe Sport. Um, I wish, I, I, as you know, Loggins wrote in her email, I represent two sexual assault victims who were um, assaulted by former Blackhawks video coach Brad Aldrich. I'm officially requesting an investigation into a cover up of these sexual uh, assaults by, uh, sorry, of these sexual assaults by Stan Bowman and an NHL team official who also holds a position of major influence with uh, USA Hockey. Um, later on in the article, there's a there's word of, of obviously the Blackhawks and the U.S. Center um, didn't say anything. And and there's also word about a code um, about prohibited um, conduct and probably some reasons why. If this stuff is proven true, why? Oh, that's, no, that's not even true because the whole situation with the Blackhawks isn't about whether it happened, but the responsibility of it. But anyway, um, regards to why maybe Bowman shouldn't be Team USA's GM come the Olympics. Um, he should, by the way that people are talking about this, he should at least be taking a step away from Team USA, and I believe he has some media availabilities that they're in contact every day, but that's it? First off, how the hell does Bowman even have that job? What do you mean? And how is he still there right now? Like, again, right now the Blackhawks aren't even denying it happened. They're just saying they're it not. wasn't our responsibility to report it. That's exactly how they're doing it. So I- I'm a little confused what USA Hockey are doing here. I mean, and why this, he hasn't? You're right. I, it, may, it doesn't make sense that he does hasn't taken a leave of absence because just based, I, I don't know if there's an actual rule based on this, but just from what I've observed over the last few years in terms of what, when this type of stuff happens, that's like the first thing that happens. The, one of the the people who are heavily involved in into an investigation of this sorts tend to take a step back from their position but no one here has done that like stan bowman is still there uh mark bergevin still there uh who's the other one kevin shovel day off still still doing stuff like uh, they haven't even taken a uh what's the word leave of absence right like that's usually what tends to happen and none of that has happened Nope. Which is just a tad odd in, in my head. It's much different levels here, but it is very surprising that that in regards to the Olympics, Bowman has not stepped down. Mm-hmm. But Evander Kane, with the stuff that's being thrown at him, stepped away from the HDA. Uh, I don't know mm-hmm. if there is a thing of it's the Olympics, but it, it is it's very much it, it it is on top of some other stuff with the Blackhawks. Not a great look right now. 
Awful look. Uh, sorry? Awful look. What did you say? Tough awful, look? Awful, awful look. Awful look. Awful look. Sorry. I completely misunderstood that. My apologies. I mean, I I don't listen to Steve Dangle that much anymore. I won't lie. Sorry, Steve. This is not this is not you, it's me. But I listened to that episode with Rick Westhead um, a couple days ago when I went to the cottage. When I was driving to the cottage. I went to a cottage. Hey, Alex. Um, but stop laughing. But it was to listen to Rick Westhead's insight on all of it was just, you know, it's remarkable that, honestly, how can you listen to everything that Rick Westhead is recounting from broken families to people just not looking at it at all or not or acknowledge, acknowledging that it happened, but just playing it off as not their responsibility? How can individuals really look at that? Individuals who, that are in charge of this league – really look at that and not step in and not start doing something for real to add on like, to that. Sorry. To add on to that. The players union did nothing. Yeah. Like the people who are there to help the players did nada. Another thing too, is that one thing that players talk about a lot is that, you know, the players union says they care about you until you're gone. And then you're just part of the NHL Alumni Association. The NHLPA does have something here. I will say it's obviously much more on the organization and the NHL organization as a whole over the NHLPA. But they still had a responsibility. And, you know, even the Alumni Association, no one, it doesn't really seem like anyone has really been in the corner of. Mm-hmm these players obviously they're not named if they were named it would be a much different story but they're not but no one has been in the corner to try and be diligent about figuring out you know how could you let this happen and hold people responsible for it and it's pretty ugly it's pretty it's a really really disgusting look on the league a league that we all know has a history of covering things and If it sees something that it doesn't like, it doesn't make a big, big deal out of it. It wants to keep it under the shadows. But this, with how damning it is, this is just pathetic. (laughs) Just, I guess, to add on on there, too, is there's like two or three reporters covering this. Yeah. Which I still don't understand. Like, yeah, it's great you retweet it. But, like... Every single person or most people have inside sources and like you're telling me you would, or just report it. Well, just let's say, let's, let's it. say like it, the, uh, of the, uh, let's say like the bigger reporters know, because uh, apparently in that STP, apparently like local Chicago outlets yes, have been. Yeah, sorry. But that's what the radio mean, stations like, yes, reporting. Yes, it. Athletic right. guys, I, the, the big, the heavy hitters, I think you mean. Yeah, it's so like right Rick now, Westhead has Westhead, done. Westhead, Katie Strang. Um, I think Lazarus had a piece La- in the yeah. article. Lazarus did have a piece And, and there on was it. one other person at the athletic thing who I think wrote an article with Katie Strang. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. But it's like, you, this is a huge story. I think I made the point when we first talked about it. Like, to me, this is bigger than just sports reporters. Like, this is, this should be on the news. Like, it's it's incredible to me that we're, it, this has been going on. Wes has been reporting on this for months. And he's the only, like, one of the only big reporters throwing out articles on, like, a weekly basis with something yeah. new. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, well, I'm just hopefully th- there's some action with USA Hockey. Um, it, just it's messy, man. It's messy. Um, before we keep going, do you want? I guess want to put a bow on Olympic stuff and just kind of go over our projected team Canada. Sure. I'll give All you right. my projected team USA because I'm repping God's country. Okay. okay. Do you do you actually have like the full roster? Me. I know what I would do. Oh. I know exactly what I would do. You want to just give us a quick thingy there, that then we can go on Team Canada. What? Then do you okay. want to do you want to give your Team USA then? Yes. Okay. Austin. Okay. 
John Eichel once he gets his his red, nine. white, and blues. Yeah, from Montreal, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. I was gonna say when he gets the disc replacement. Okay. Yeah. When he goes to a competent organization that lets him do it, like the Rangers. Are we? How are you doing? Are you? Are, are we giving it a roster? Or are we giving it like lines? What, what are we doing here? Uh, I I threw mine with lines. Yeah, but... so did I. Okay, I'll I'll give you some lines. So I'll okay. give you Austin Matthews, yeah. winged by Patty Kane, and what's a good one? Phil Kessel. No, he's not going to be on the team, unfortunately. The Either Kyle Connor or his good old pal. Um, Matthew Kachuk. I'm sorry. Did you say Phil Kessel didn't make is not going to make the team? Did I hear that right? Yeah. Oh, what? Well, because he didn't make the World Cup either. Yeah. That was bad. I genuinely. Well, I think he can, but uh, I think about it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he makes the team at all. Do you think Alex DeBrincat does? And I, that may seem kind of silly, but if you guys remember a couple years ago. He won, He didn't make the World Junior roster, and he was lighting it up in the um, – I forget what league he, he was, was exactly. The dub. He didn't make the, the roster. OHL, the OHL. He was on E. He was playing for Erie. Yeah, and he didn't yeah. make it. Yeah, and he had a phenomenal year playing, obviously, with Ryan – with uh, Dylan Strome, but still. Um, Another player, funny enough. You, I can go either way. I think – personally, I don't think he will. Mm-hmm. I, think, I, I think like a year ago he would have. But no, at least he's not in the official Mike, Mike Jagasar projection. So, Olympic team so, of, of so he can't. He can't. Who else? Um, John Eichel will be winged by Jake Gensel. Let's make it spicy. We'll get Blake Wheeler on there. I'm going to throw in Dylan Larkin. Team Chaos with Max Pacioretty. Okay. And now that he's healthy, Anders Lee. Anders okay. Lee is making my Olympic team. Really? Yes. That's a Team then, USA guy, though. That is. Yeah. And then, you know, the extras, I'll throw in TJ Oshie, JT Miller, yep. and Joe Pavelski, because he has to be on the team. Captain America, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, he won't get much playing time. He'll probably be like a fourth-line guy, but he's got to be on the team. Okay. And the defense, obviously, Quinn Hughes, Jeff Petrie. I like it. That's good. Um, John Carlson. I think I really want to see him play with Ryan McDonough. That would be. I think that would be a, a nasty underrated line. Mm-hmm. And then it's a mix. I don't know if I'll have Seth Jones on there, like as like with a lot of minutes, but you also got to factor in Tory Krug, Jacob Slavin. How can I forget him? Yeah. Yeah. And if you're taking away from the offense point of it, Charlie McAvoy, because that guy's also really stepped up. I mean, he looked phenomenal this year in the playoffs. Um, and then goalies, your starter has to be Connor Hellebuck. No ifs, ands, or buts. And they take three goalies. So, John, I don't know. Yeah, probably John Gibson. Mm-hmm. I still think he's still great, despite the fact that he's been playing for a terrible team for the last few years. And Ben Bitten, <laughs> kidding. Thatcher Demko. Okay. Yeah. Those are you, fair. Know, you know how not great of a look it'll be if the third or fourth most, the highest paid defenseman in the NHL does not get picked to go play for Team USA. I want a Jones Wawenski. I want a Jones Wawenski pairing. Wawenski, I, I don't even think will make it. Probably not. Like, oh, no. Yeah. Brutal. Mm-hmm. Okay, Alex, do you want to show up? Uh, do you want to? Uh, do you have it on like an Excel sheet or something? I have it on notes. Do you want to screen share and get it up then? Yeah, one second. Okay, good, good, good. Because I have a bit of a meme on mine. Okay. So I kind of want to save it for last. So I'm interested oh, okay. to see who you have on your Olympic roster. Okay, I'll just put it on a Word document, and make it okay. easier. Good, 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 good. So it looks clean once Microsoft Words decides it wants mm-hmm. to open. While Alex is getting that up, three year, six point five, Mike. What do you think of the Reinhardt deal? Pretty good. 
And that's the analysis he came here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Top, Pretty good. Top <laughs> no, no, I think it's a it's a really good deal. I mean, oh, no, no, what just ahead. happened? I'll just oh, wait. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I think no, I think it was a really good deal. I think, I mean, that's a team that's been, you know, they did really well with it with great depth and great defense, like offensive, defensive wise. Um, but I think they could have used a bit more like actual firepower. Mm-hmm. Um, Barkov, Huberto, obviously two of the best guys to do it. But now on that power play, you can throw in Sam Reinhardt there. I think that's awesome. I, Yeah, I, I think they'll be – honestly, they're going to be a threat in the Atlantic for the Maple Leafs, the team that I'm not cheering for. Mm-hmm. But the they're going to have a tough time making it to the playoffs. So look at Alex's face. So, Alex, why don't you walk us through? How about do you want to go through your goalies, your defensemen, then forward? You have Mitch Marner. On I was about to say because we're we need to talk about you having Marner on the top line at Team Canada. Just okay, wait. so you want to walk us through? Okay, explain. so yeah, go. No, 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 no. Let's let's hear, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's okay, hear your okay. your reasoning. All right, yeah, for take note. Take us for Marner. I don't think he deserves to be on the first line. I just think he. Would but he's fit. on your first line. I might, I might okay. just for, for, for people seconds. who are just like listening and don't have. I'm going to read out the line. Yeah. If you guys yeah. let me. I'm trying to, but Mike, Mike keeps going. Mike, just keep, go. Mike just keeps talking. Oh, so, so you guys invite me onto this podcast to yell at me. No, I, well, I, I wanted the great in-depth analysis. I got, he's good. So hurry up and read it. <laughs> uh, okay. McKinnon, McDavid and Marner. Uh-huh. So I just think that's pure offense and Mm -hmm. Marner will get literally everyone the puck. And that's why he's on the first line. And McDavid's the center. McDavid is the center. Yeah. Then I have Marshawn Crosby and Bergeron because I just think that's just going to be a nasty line to play against. And then you need a shutdown line, right? So you got Sean Couturier who's won the Selkie, Ryan O'Reilly who's won the Selkie (laughs) and Mark Stone who deserves to win the Selkie. And then just three guys at the bottom in Stamkos, Tavares, and Point. And again, just pain in the ass to play against. And I put Stamkos there because he's just going to be great on the power play. I think that's fair. Is that I'll fair reasoning well. for having Marner on this team? Or is that not good enough for you, Mike? It's your team, man. I don't know what that go. means. And then uh, my extras are Suzuki, Shifley, and Barzell. I'm interested that you put Suzuki on because people I are having, too. What the hell? Been, I wasn't going to go there, Mike. But what did he there, say? People, he said, what the hell? People have oh. been pushing for <laughs> – there's been a wave with Suzuki being up there. Why not put him on there? He goes for – even if he doesn't play, the experience. Hey, I, I would – trust me, I'd be very okay with it. I'd be so happy to see him there. Uh, do you want to go see. through your defenseman? Sure. Uh, I got Shea Theodore and Alex Petrangelo. Mm-hmm. Uh, they play together in Vegas for a bit. Could work. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, Riley and Makar. Because why the hell not? And then Shabbat and Dougie Hamilton. Okay. And then Ekblad and Jacob Chikorin. Chikorin, again, experienced. I doubt he would play, but he's there. Okay. Uh, and then goalies. I got Price, obviously. Like, I do I actually have to explain? Flurry no. again. Do I actually have to explain? And then I was a toss up. Like, should I send a young guy or should I just bring in a third veteran? And I said, I'm going to bring in the third vet- veteran, Darcy Kemper, who I always forget is Canadian. I know. It sounds Swedish. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. my Team Canada. I do like it, Alex. I do like it. We have some similarities, but you and I have some great differences, by the way. Some very big differences. Listen, I wouldn't put Marner on the first line if he didn't, if it wasn't a stylistic fit. I don't have I'll Marner in my team, period. That's fair. I've seen plenty oh, of people. Wow, okay. I, I will explain it, but I, I like it. I, I think it's better than Team USA, obviously. But okay. um, I do sure. I do love your super selkie shutdown line. Oh, I think that'll just be – like I think every line is just going to be a pain to play against. Uh-huh. Okay. That's what I did. All right, sweet. Okay. Okay, here is my Team Canada. Ladies and gentlemen – First off, in net, we have the starter, Carey Price, for obvious reasons. A big game, amazing in any sort of world. We've seen that before in the Olympics. 
Our second goalie is obviously Mark andre Fleury, the reigning Vesna. By the way, this is off, based off right now in the year. Um, now, you may ask, Adam, why is Carter hiding? I think my just sat up, but I think he saw my fourth line. So the third goalie is Carter Hart. Now, you may be wondering, Adam, his game, his uh, goal saved above average was like minus 17. Experience, 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 and I want him being around Carey Price. The defenseman. Um, I just think Petrangelo may be the best Canadian defenseman in the world right now. Uh, the way he can take over a game you saw in the playoffs, he's there with Adam Pellick. Um, just like a defensive pairing that can do everything. My second pairing is Hamilton and Ekblad. Same sort of reason. I hope Ekblad bounces back like from his injury and still looks good. Uh, Makar and Spurgeon, McCurr, like Makar is my puck mover. Spurgeon's my stay-at-home guy. I want to have a nice balance. Now, the two guys I have on the outside looking in are Theodore and Chikorin. Because, like, if you need scoring, those are the guys that go in. A lot of these other guys, except for, for Spurgeon, because I think Spurgeon's way more defensive than offensive, are, like, can go both ways. And even if Makar isn't the best defensively, Spurgeon will will pick up on that. Uh, obviously, Petrangelo was the A. Now, you may be wondering, Adam, where the hell is Thomas Shabbat and where the hell is Morgan Riley? I... I need Morgan Riley to have back-to-back solid years before I put him in the best defenseman in the league. I, I just can't do it with him. Like, in the playoffs, he was great, obviously. But his regular season just scared me. So I want more from Riley before I put him on. Uh, and I know, like, Theodore, like, for, apparently him and, and Petrangelo were never on at the same time. So no, I have them sort of the separate. So it's, it's really – but I mean, like, whenever they were playing yeah. well. Yeah, um, they did the same thing. Okay, my extra four words are Tavares, Horvat, and Stamkos. Stamkos is just such a weird player. Uh, Horvat, because it's Bo Horvat. Okay, my first line, Captain Crosby, obviously, with Bergeron and Marchand. That's been Team Canada to a point. Speaking of which, my second line, McDavid is going to center Jonathan Huber, though, and Braden Point. I just, I think it doesn't matter with most of Canada's forwards. It doesn't matter what you do. I just have it here. I'm like, like all of like points the trigger, man. McDavid does his thing, and Huber, though, is dishing out the puck. My third line, first off, McKinnon gets an A because he's going to make sure no one's eating any bad sweets or anything. Um, he's going to be on the wing. O'Reilly's the centerman purely because I trust him more defensively, and he'll be good on the draws. Uh, and Barzell is just it's, – it's offensively. All three of those guys can get hold of the puck, and they just won't give it up, and I love it. My fourth line is a meme. Listen, if you want a shutdown line, you do a shut line down properly, ladies and gentlemen. Nazem Kadri, because he's difficult to play against, even if he gets suspended, who cares? <laughs> Mark Stone as the right winger. And the best shutdown forward in the National Hockey League, prove me wrong, the fourth line center for Team Canada is Phil Deneau. Let's go. But, like, I hate you. That's a real fourth line. That's like, a like, shutdown line. You. We saw what Kadri did against McDavid that one time. He'll do it now. And if he gets suspended, which he probably will, who cares? We got guys to come in. I don't have Marner for the pure fact of on a big stage, I can no longer trust him. Um, Beside that, yeah, Phil Deneau is an Olympian. Obviously, this is a meme, but I I had a lot of fun with the fourth line. I I I showed this to Alex Baumgartner and he just laughed. So, um, yeah. The only name I have questions about is Kadri, to be honest. I, like, I could I, see them picking Dino if they really wanted to. Like, it's an option, the, I guess, depending on how he starts the season. But mm-hmm. I, I just I, – I can't see them – I just can't see them uh, picking Kadri. Also, um, I hate to be a party pooper, but – Ekblad and Spurgeon are right-handed defensemen, so Team yeah, no. Canada will not play them on the left. Well, that's why it's mine. That's fair. Good point. Um, Mike has just raised his hand in the Zoom call. Does he have Go something ahead, to say? Mike. That fourth line's terrible. It's shut down, Anyways. man. It's shut down. Is that all you had to say? Now you're giving me a clapping emoji for the memes, that joke of the day. He's just playing with emojis now. Great. Anyway, uh, there you go. I love it. Now he has a heart. Um, the memes. I love the memes. Uh, so now we have a, some weird contracts. AK oh, some- so I don't even do my own Team Canada? You, do you have one? Whoa. You a team USA. I literally just typed it out. Okay. Do you want to see? And screen share and show us your Team Canada, Mike. Oh, no. It's not, it's not, it's not on, my, it's, it's on my iPad. Okay. That's okay. Just All say right. it out loud. All right. 
I'll, I'll say it out loud. I got McDavid mm-hmm. with McKinnon. Yep. yep. And Mark Stone. Okay. Either Mark Stone or Mark Shifley. Then number two, I'm reuniting the MVP line of the World Cup of Hockey. Okay. So that's Crosby, Bergeron, Marchand. Mm-hmm. Then I got Braden Point. Yeah. I don't know how he's on the third line, but he should be much higher in Jonathan Huberto. And um, Ra- I, sorry, not Ryan O'Reilly. Uh, Matthew Barzell. And then I got Ryan O'Reilly, Bo Horvat, and Mitch Marner. Okay. So you're like uh, def- talk, putting him on the fourth line. I can't wait till. No, 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 no. he'll probably move up. I'll probably, sw- I'll, I'll probably move him to the- play him with McDavid. Honestly, mm-hmm. if anyone could play with, you're right. I don't trust him in the big, in the big leagues anymore. But I don't know. Was McDavid? On this is just first my line? draft. Yeah, McDavid is obviously in the first line. I was just asking. Oh yeah, you just asked me. Then I got Shea Theodore with Kale McCaw. Kale McCaw. Didn't did you guys ever realize his name sounds like McCaw? That's actually so funny. Anyways, there's a legend. Josh, Josh Morrissey. Really. And Alex Petrangelo. All right. I like Josh Morrissey. I think he's underrated. And then Morgan Riley and Tomas Chabot. 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 I love it. Okay. The extras would be Drew Doughty. Got to have him on the team. So no oh, Dougie Hamilton. Okay. okay. And Dougie okay. Hamilton. We're going to have the Doughty debate in a second, bud. <laughs> Go ahead. Actually, no. Riley and Dougie Hamilton. Yeah, I'll, I'll switch that apart okay. there. And then you still have Drew Doughty on your team, is what you're saying. As an extra, if I'm someone just, dies, I'm just trying to be clear. I'm just trying to be clear. Yeah, so it's I, a meme. Yeah. Okay. My starter is Carrie, of course. Yeah, it's got to be Carrie Price. Yep. If he slips, if he slips up, then I'll throw in Mark Andre Fleury. And then I'm in a twist. I don't know if I want to throw in Kata Hot or Darcy Kemper. Mm-hmm. I really think it would. Actually, the Olympics is in the winter. Ooh. I think I'm going Darcy Camper. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I like it. Who's your captain? Connor. I like it. Okay. Um, okay, so Drew Downey. So he shouldn't be a regular because there are, I think it's just a pure fact, there are six defensemen at least better than him. Yes. So I think we have seen, and if we're talking about it, I think if, Terry Price, again, has a crap regular season. If he's the starter at the Olympics, I don't think anyone's going to bat an eye because he can elevate himself. I don't think I've ever – like, I, I, don't, I wouldn't question Drew Doughty's ability to step up for some reason. I don't want him in the starting lineup, but I wouldn't be mad if he was a seventh and eighth guy and all of a sudden if he gets in and shows that he still has it on that bigger stage, I, I, I'd be okay with it. Again, not starting. There are better defensemen now. Yeah. But like there is something to say that that Drew Dowdy has been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He has. I feel like people's view of Drew Dowdy has taken or some of them has taken a 180 cuz I think if you go back a year or two now it was just Drew Dowdy hate. Like ever since he got into that scuffle, we'll call it, with Matthew Kachuk. It's just everyone's been so anti Drew Doughty. It's it's uh, it's weird. I was literally for Drew Doughty on that one, but yeah. But I don't know. Honestly, I really I. He's overpaid. Yes, I honestly don't think he's that bad though that people make him out to be. No, I don't. I think he's played on crap teams with crap defense next to him. Fair. Yeah. Well, you know, no, it's a fair point. Like, I think this year is going to tell us a lot about Drew Doughty. That looks like maybe the Kings are are taking that step forward. Like, obviously, they're not going to be contenders, but they're kind of like New Jersey that they've got some great young players and they've made some smart moves in the off season. You know, Echo yeah. and Demo in that. Yeah. Arvidsson. I think be, Arvidsson. Arvidsson. Ar- what did I say? Echo. Echo. That's Ekholm. a completely different. Thing. No, honestly, I think. Yeah. 
they're they're moving to that stage now in their rebuild where the pieces are coming together now. I think they're going to take in another step next year and they're on their way back up. I I I think it's enormous that they got a back a, a center now there behind Kopitar and Denol. I think that's enormous. I think they, one that that very well is could be better better defensively than Selkie when they're on Jay Kopitar is so cool to see on LA. You know yeah. what else I'm kind of thinking too is if there's an odd name out on Team Canada, is does it matter? Because if Barry Trotz is running this like a system there, like you can win with you can win with anyone the way that guy coaches. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Drew Doughty could play well under Barry Trotz without a question. Anyone anybody, can. literally anybody. Can. I yeah, could anybody. be nominated for the Vesna playing under Barry Trotz. But I think one thing that we haven't brought up yet What's that? is that they shouldn't be coaching the team. Oh, my God. Because they're oh, like, why, I, like, why are Canadian coaches on American teams? It should be a Canadian coach. Okay, so question. Who is the best coach in Canada right now? I don't know if this is a controversial take, but I was going to say it's Travis a I, I was going to say Travis, Travis Green. Green. So by our logic, Travis Green should be the coach of Team Canada because he, is he Canadian? Yes. Yes. And you know, it, it's a, it's silly how people are getting upset that John Cooper is head coach because he is obviously a coach. Yeah. Let me let me let me are tell all your listeners now. I am completely joking. When I said oh, yeah. I'm completely it's joking. It's not like Babcock coached the American team the whole time he was head coach of Team Canada, but whatever. Mm-hmm. It's okay. In fact, he hadn't that. coached a game for the Leafs when he was head coach of the World Cup team either. So, uh, yeah. No, I think he did. I think it was. Yeah, he did that year. For a year. It was that was the year. really bad year. Because that was Matthew's first game. <clears throat> Matthew's first game at oh, Scotiabank was. Yeah. World Cup. So that was their last place finish year. That's when he he said, "Oh yeah, we we're, we're gonna have this success in Toronto," and then we uh, never did. You yeah, think you're funny, eh? You think you're funny. What are you upset about, Mike? You're not even leaving. We sit back, you know. First round exit. First round exit. Now we're gonna have a docu series. It's gonna poke fun of us losing again. Oh, but it's okay because Zach Bogosian's driving around in a nice car and uh, Justin Hall's whoa, golfing. Whoa. In the yeah, don't throw but, Zach but Kyle Bogosian Dubas is not bus. a patient, guys. Don't throw Zach Bogosian under the bus there, okay? Ah, I'm not mad. I'm not a Leafs it. fan. I'm not mad. I'm not a Leafs fan. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Alex is a good friend of ours. Why are you trying to be rude to him? Why are you trying to? Do I look? Mad? Yeah, he's mad. I'm when he mad. when he says that, you know, he's mad. We were talking a little bit about Carter Hart there in the Olympics. He has to say it right. Who? Say it right. Carter Hart. <laughs> I signed a new deal. Uh, you try way too hard to say it that way. Kata hot. No, it's just Kata hot. Or it's Kata Carter Hart. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's <laughs> Kata hot. It's both. Wait, Kata it's hot. both. He said. Even though Boston is in America, it's still Kata hot. Kata hot. Okay. Well, Kata we'll, hot. we'll continue then. Um, Carter Hart shouldn't be on the Olympic hot. because he plays for an American team. That's how one people will say. Anyway, so uh, he signs a new deal. It's a three-year one. It's worth just under $12 million. The AAV is 3.979 because whatever. I'm kind of shocked by this deal because obviously we all know how you know not good Carter Hart was last year. Uh, I- I'm just very kind of perplexed as to why. And apparently this is one of the richest goaltending deals the Flyers have ever given out which is hilarious. Um, but I'm surprised he went, first off, that he got a three-year. I thought he would have taken maybe one or two. Or that the Flyers gave him nearly $4 million a year after last season. I guess you're betting on it, but still, at the end of that deal, he's going to get paid if he you know, goes back to form. Yeah, that's the thing, is I think it was on both sides, you're making a huge bet. Um on what in the, what's going to happen in the next three years, um, because it could go really well. Like it'll probably it should go really well for Carter Hart because he. If you go look, those first two years, it, it went really well, and then this year it kind of collapsed on him, and for multiple reasons, not all his own. Uh, but I'm not worried about it though. I'm really not. Neither am I. I it's think just he's a Carol- great goalie. He just had a down year. He's, but he's going to get paid when, okay, Mike left. Awesome. I'll, I'll yeah. pause it. Do you want me to pause there or just keep going? 
we'll just keep going. Oh, okay. don't have anything to say anyway. It, it, got, <laughs> it feared that how bad that year was and it's just like underlying numbers, he might have been the worst goalie in the league last year. But like, I'm not sitting there saying it's an awful deal. It's just to me weird on both sides, I guess. Like if it, in my eyes, if you're Carter Hart, you take the one or two year deal and say, okay, like, and then it's, it's weird to say two years. Cause now we're talking about a single year, but like, man, in two years, you could get paid yeah. if you wanted to like Shesterkin just got paid. Uh, if you, if you want to call it that to me, that's getting paid. Like that's a we'll, lot of we'll get to and we'll get to him, mm-hmm. but it seems like they gave him more money than they really needed to at this exact moment. Yeah, I'd say that as well. Mike, what do you think? I am surprised that he didn't just go for a one or two year deal. Um, It's tricky. I mean, goalies are the least predictable position in this sport. I... Like, I think that it all comes down at the end of the day to just a lot of people just don't believe in Carter Hart after having a single bad year. And mind you, it was a bad year, but it also really happened towards that second half. And I still think, honestly, I still think he's going to go down as one of the best goalies uh, in the league in the foreseeable future once he starts to find his form. Yeah, the only thing that really just confuses me is this. I would have taken a one or two year deal. I wouldn't have taken a three year deal, but I mean, I'm also not Carter Hart, so I'm sure people want security. People don't want to be moved around. Um, and that's the thing: starting goalies. Like nowadays, we used to have this thing where starting goalies weren't really shipped out. They didn't really move that much, right? Now I feel like in this day and age, despite there being a flat cap, goalies are moving left, right, and center. Seriously. So I think he's just doing his best to try and nail down some security, keep developing. Um, interesting that Martin Jones is going to be that backup to him now that Brian Elliott is gone. But um, no, I think I think it's just a fine deal. Seriously. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? Twelve million dollars. Uh, that's that's pretty nice. Uh, that's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. So a very uh, it, another weird deal, another really weird deal to me. So Igor Shesterkin, um, I know I did. Igor. Igor Shesterkin. Shesterkin. Shesterkin um, has a new deal with the Rangers. Uh, it's a four-year deal. I hate deals like this. Twenty-two million. So twenty-two million six hundred sixty-six thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars. The AAV is five point six 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 seven. Cause whatever. <laughs> um, so what's kind of weird is if you look at the underlying numbers and again, what name of the episode? Underlying numbers. It is a good deal. He's a good goalie. Yeah. Uh, in fact, his goals against. Uh, sorry, his goals above average save stuff like that new go- like hip goalie stat. Mm-hmm. It's higher than Varlamov's. It was higher in Biddington's. It was below Grubauer's. It's like a solid three, right? But so apparently this is um, the and this is from Frank Saravelli, the most money ever handed out to a goalie on his second contract in both AAV and total dollars. And it is kind of weird to see a goalie get this who has a grand total of 47 games of NHL experience. I mean, that's 47 regular season games. And I think at most it would be another one or two of playoffs. I can't remember if he was there for the uh, he played the Carolina game. sweep. But. He played one game in the playoffs. So like 48 yeah. games of experience. It's just, I have faith it's going to be a big <laughs> deal. Like, like Shesterkin's thought pretty well high of. It's mm-hmm. just weird, dude. It, it is It is weird. I, wonder, I think it's a new norm. <laughs> is it though? But like, who? I think it's. I think it's him? signaling the way for a new norm. Uh, also, Chris Drury is pulling some things, man. Chris Drury's pulling some things. I'm not sure how to feel about him so far. They put a Drew. lot of money out there this off season. Does Jim? Does James Dolan know there's a hard cap in the NHL? Is he aware? Because. I just, I want to make sure for everyone's sake that he knows. 
Yeah, it's. I think he's kind of like, well, not my job to figure it out. It's uh, that's Drewy's job. <laughs> like I'm actually distraught uh, that Jim's don't that Jim Dolan is stepping in now. That's that's fair. Uh, just how much? Because like to me, yeah, 47 games of NHL experience and 35 this year. 35 this year, and I'm hesitant on saying this, but I wonder how much when he walked into that room and said. Yeah, I have 47 games of NHL experience, but I put up some damn good numbers in the KHL, especially over the last three years. And I know it's the KHL. I, I, I know there's the talent discrepancy. Super League. That what, and, like, I just have to think that that did play a factor in these contract negotiations. And, like, Miko Koskinen, who got – Four and a half million dollars for three years, and he played a hand. Okay, of okay, that's a completely NHL. different situation. That's Peter Shirelli. No, no, I understand that, but I, I'd have to imagine his KHL numbers did come into discussion when talking about this contract. Does he have? A, I'm assuming he has an opt-out clause, right? Can he just go back to Russia? No, no, he can't. No. Okay, never mind. No. Well, I mean, like, and- sure, he can. Va- Vladim Shipacheyov did, but they terminated. Sh- ship it, ship it, sh- what? Sh- what? How it's is it? Vadim Shipachev. Okay, close. Shipachev. Let's so just say Shipachev. Shipa- Shipa- what? Shipachev. Sounds like a two BC superb man when he was. Uh, That's like saying yeah. Capicola instead of Gabagool. Shut up. That's just not right. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. I was so done with having me on this spot. Um, <laughs> a big on. thing here is that. Yeah, it's a small sample size, but I mean, when George Ebb is gone, when Eichel is on the team, kidding. I I don't know. It's just this deal, mind you, it buys him, it buys them two years of his arbitration eligibility, buys him two years in free agency. I just think it's Drury really just trying to lock this guy up from the get go. Like, and again, I think honestly, in the it's it's a new norm. I don't know how the NHL is doing this, but I feel like players nowadays. We saw it a couple years ago, start where RFAs, like rookie RFA, not rookie, sorry, entry level deals, in their RFAs would just go from like nine seventy nine hundred twenty five k to friggin Mitch Marner. Well, mm-hmm. to be to be fair, Miko Rantanen, one team. Uh, who who got scored. that is fair? Like, yeah. let's, let's to be fair, like yeah, you're right. Miko Rantanen got nine point two five million dollars, but that's a good deal. No, what I'm saying is that like Matthew Barzell, he didn't get a cheap deal once he signed. He got seven Fall. million, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, we've reached an age now where the NHL, despite that it's going to be a flat cap for the foreseeable future, even though it's going apparently to eighty two next year, eighty two point yeah, five. Sure. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, I'll believe it when I see it. We've reached a moment in the NHL, or at least we're in organizations, where I feel like teams are just going to start overpaying, or not overpaying, just willing to pay from the get-go. That's why I think this is setting a precedent, and moving forward, goalies are going to get those longer deals after maybe a trial or a couple years in their entry level. Like I really think that's going to happen now. Yeah, so I I think it's new for goalies, though. But cause yeah, no, no, but yeah, I know. They've been doing goalies. it for players for years. Yeah, no, goalies are different because goalies are tricky to predict. Right. But I, I really think now it's that it's come to goalies now. I think this, like it's going to happen now. I think goalies are going to be in the same kind of boat when it comes to like that payment schedule now as just regular skaters, forest defensemen, really. Especially when they're providing – positive value on an entry level contract. Nowadays I just think GMs in this day and age I don't think they honestly care about the future. I think Hold if on. they see something positive, gotta sign him from the get go. I mean Hi Adam's uh, mom. Yeah. No, she she did FaceTime me. She texted <laughs> me ask if I was done. I didn't get back to her yet and she FaceTimed me. Sorry, <laughs> go on. I'm gonna text her now. What do you think, Alex? No, I think I I can see it can see it happening, 
just because I, and, and everyone, a lot of people keep saying this nowadays is that it's a young man's league. Not, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's now transitioning its way towards goaltenders as well. Because of the flat cap, you're forced in a way to have to play guys on cheaper contracts. Like I just went to go look up Carey Price to see what did he get after his ELC. And it was like two and a half million dollars for, for, co- for, for two years. And then he got the six years, six and a half million dollars, right? Like I, I just wonder if because they're getting positive value from these guys, they're more likely to say, here, we'll give you four or five, four or five years at what could be considered market value now, but a steal later. If it backfires, it backfires. Right. Like <laughs> teams are just ready, ready to soak it now. We said it a couple episodes ago. They spent eight hundred million dollars on the first day of free agency. No one cares. No one cares about the future. Nope. Yeah. Prison uh, rules. All right. Uh, looking ahead, another sort of free agent Russian big stuff here. Man, um, I love watching this unfold. I know Daniel hates it, but I love watching this. And Minnesota had one thing going for him this year, and it may not go well now. So this is from Frank Saravelli. Uh, update. Hearing Kirill Kaprizov has a tentative agreement uh, in place of CSKI Moscow on a one-year eight-figure deal in American dollars to begin on September 1st should a new contract not materialize with the Minnesota Wild. However, the Wild appear ready and willing to talk to um, a median term length deal. Initial hang-up was Minnesota was only interested in a seven- or eight-year deal for the Calder Trophy winner. That's not the case, bunch of options, sorry, that's not the case, a uh, bunch of options in term. But the Kaprizov camp uh, contends there has been no offer made since April. We'll see where this goes. Two sides rem- remain in uh, communication. So first off, if anyone out there believed that, you know, the Russian salary caps, um, the hard salary cap in the in the, uh, the KHL was a thing. No, it's not. <laughs> Just, uh, you know who owns CSK Moscow? Uh, is it partly government owned or is it's, it's either partly government owned or an, or an oil tycoon? Probably. So it's, it's an oil company named uh, Rosneft and guess who they're owned by? Uh, Putin? The government. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So that tells you what you need to know about the deal. Like I bet there's a deal there. I, yeah. I, 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 I believe there's a deal there, but like <laughs> they could do whatever they want. Cause it's Russia. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I can't be more clear than that. So is he just trying to, is he just trying to inch towards free agency at this point? And he just quickly. Yeah. Just- it literally seems like that. Sorry, Daniel. Sorry, but, Daniel. But wouldn't it? And I feel like we've had this discussion, but I'll bring it up again. Would it not be beneficial to I, – I know you're walking him to free agency, but in three years' time, when the big chunk of that those two buyouts are off the books, you now have all this money to offer Kirill Kaprizov in three years' time. Like, I get you don't want to walk him to free agency because he might leave, but if you continue to win – if you continue to improve and you have a boatload of money and you're not going to go out and get Eichel, I don't see, I think the, there's more upside here. Well, it's, isn't it more like in three years, that's when all their cap stuff is, is gone. And then in three years, that's when they start getting bit. So yeah, in four years, in four years, the seven and a half or $14 million. That's it would it would be better for them to try and just go for it in this four year window because it it's either you you give Caprice out what he wants and you have that asset and if you know he's right. gonna leave then you trade him or right. he goes to Russia and you're back then you're worse than you were with Parisi it, and Slitter. Exactly, mm-hmm. but that that that's my point. Like Minnesota seemed to want to go long term with him, and it only until recently has that changed. But. If you say, okay, we will hand you a four-year contract and say, after four years, we're actually going to have $14 million in more cap space. 
So we'll be able to offer you a boatload of money and hopefully the guys we expect to take steps, take those steps. Like there's still young guys. There's Matthew Boldy who hasn't played a game yet. Marco Rossi who hasn't played a game yet. Who did they take this year? Like there's just, there's guys who will be taking those steps and filling around it. It's not like he's signing a four-year deal and he's in Buffalo. What do you think, comrade Mike? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. He just threw Whoa. that in there. Just Jeez. threw that in there. I'm surprised, really. I'm surprised that the glory of the NHL is something that Kaprizov would put on the line. Like, he would actually rather go, because, like, he'd rather go back to the KHL rather than play in the best league in the world where he was a superstar because they want to give him a couple more years. I think no, I think Minnesota's caving in though. I I mean we see reports all the time that Minnesota I would think Minnesota's gonna cave in and give him like that bridge deal. And I think it'll work out because like you said, once that absolute nightmare of dead money on the cap is gone. That's a lot of money right there. So, I don't know. It's interesting because, honestly, it really just lies on where his heart is. Does he want to play in the premier league of the world, the best league, the NHL, or does he want to go back to his native land, the KHL? Because he would rather go there for God. And I think they, they offered him, what, a one-year deal for like $8 million or something like that? It's, and, it's, I think it said it's, it's, it's eight figures. Yeah. So $10 million, man. Even bigger. Sorry. So, so yeah. And they have money to throw around. That's too. Mitch Marner money. <laughs> yeah. For any Leafs fan that's out there. Ha ha ha. The Leafs fans are so naive. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, you really think because you really think he would go away back to the KHL for a year and bet on coming back to so, the NHL again after that? Well, what's going to change in a year? What's going to change in a year? Exactly. So what exactly happens? So for him to eventually be a free agent, even after 26, he'd still Minnesota property, is he not? Yeah. So he would basically, what I assume it would be is he would have to, if he just goes back to Russia, if he comes back to Minnesota and they will welcome him back with open arms, yeah, then he would try and look for like a very short term deal to try and get out. Like right, that would that would probably be his option. So he either goes back to Russia for at least a year or two until he's able to be a UFA. Like he's gonna have to if he wants to play in the NHL, no matter what, for Minnesota for a bit. He has to, yeah. He's literally all he's doing is basically in Minnesota. Yeah, they'd welcome him back for open arms, but they wouldn't want him. Actually, no, they wouldn't accept that. Take basically a year off to play for another league instead of us. Because New Jersey had to do that with Kovalchuk, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. It was so, a whole. Yeah, that was. I mean, it was a nightmare to get Kovalchuk back in the league. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I. He just can't make the mistake the mistake Kovalchuk did. It's Kovalchuk was there were, every year there was something about. And by the time he came back, he was he was a depth player again. He was only back because yeah, it, it took way too long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if he's he, going to be careful. I I think the other option is if he leaves, they can trade him. Like if he doesn't want to trade leave, his rights, that's the only other thing. I mm-hmm. can think of because if he's just on Minnesota and he's hard set on not wanting to be in Minnesota, and I don't know if that's the case, but if that is the case, like why why are you just keeping a depreciating asset? As time goes on, he clearly doesn't want to be here, so you you're you're gonna have to get rid of him. Somehow. I don't even think it's about him not wanting to be there as much as he's just gauging team success, right? Because he isn't saying. I want to be here for three years so I can leave immediately. It's I want to be here for three years so then I can weigh my options for which team is the best that I can go to. And I still don't understand why Minnesota is so hard set on not like why they were so hard set on so long for giving him the max. I'm sure he'll take a four year deal, a two, three or four year deal. And even if it's three, it's one year to soak of 
without him. And by then, Minnesota will start putting pieces together. Well, you, you got to think of it like this if, if we're questioning why are Minnesota going to be so hard foot on this. They need him way more than, than in a way that he will need Minnesota. Like, especially oh, yeah. Parise and Suter stuff. Uh, you got to think that a lot of the thought, not just to k- kind of see what cap or capture would have been, but it probably also would have been like, this money is going to help us keep. Him. Now, I, I think the, the bigger question there as Alex is like, and what's, what's bad with them if, is that if this thing about no offer since April is a big problem. Like you have to yeah. do eventually, like a good negotiation, the word is, I think Friedman has said this before, is if both sides are a little upset about what's kind of happened. Like there is no such thing as a perfect negotiation. Like both sides almost have to be like, what about this? What about that? Like I think that's more thing on Minnesota is they got to move here on some point. And it's like with every day now, Mike said it, we're almost done the summer. Yeah. You, it's disastrous for you if you go into next year about the freeze off. They, it's not about having to necessarily move. It's about giving him options that aren't seven or eight year deals. Like if he doesn't want the seven or eight year deal, okay, that that option is still there for you if you want it. If you want eight years by what he, they said he was going to be the highest paid player in Wild history. Yeah. So that's that's a pretty chunky number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if you sign him for eight years, but you have to have other options. Like you can't just say we're only going long term and that's it, because this is the result of that. The result yeah. of that is I haven't received a contract offer since April. Like that's the that's the, the, the craziest part to me. As you say it out loud, is he hasn't received a contract offer since April. How do you let that happen? That, that's if that report is true. That's if that report is true, yeah. obviously. Yes. Allegedly. If not, if they have offered him a seven, eight million dollar deal and he's he's de- declined it, then it's much different if he's really genuinely not had anything since April. Because if so, that's pathetic. That's before the playoffs even started. So I don't know if Justin Russo. No, no, is it no, just Michael Russo? Michael, Michael sorry. Um, so I wish Daniel was here. He would. Uh, he would have the scoop. He'd have the scoop. Okay, uh, we got two little little nuggets to talk about here, both to do with the Leafs because the Habs just aren't. All the Habs. Oh, are- we always have to talk about the Leafs. The Leafs. We, we the, Leafs the, the Leafs. Leafs and the, the Habs. Leafs, on the, Leafs. Show, but- the Leafs. What? Why does no one ever talk about the Rangers anymore? We talked no about cares. Shusterkin. Yeah, but what about Ryan Reeves? Did or Dryden know? Hunt? I mean, we did actually talk about Ryan Reeves. Uh, or Jack Eichel. Because that hasn't happened yet, and he's not it's going, going to happen. What won't? He's not going. Anyways, to the anyways, let, let's let's do your Leafs talk. Okay. Um. Is it Dustin Emu? Dusty. Emu. Dusty. I, I Dusty don't know Emu. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his last name. Such it's a sick just, name, Dusty Emu. It, it's just <laughs> the way I've read such it. Such a sick name. I it's don't the way know. I've read it. It's a weird name. Anyway, so Dusty Emu, who has been kind of said the the Jack Campbell whisper of saving his career in L.A. Um, was for about a day or two the a member of the Toronto Marlies, I believe their goaltending coach. coach. Yeah, um, that was very quickly the leaps after some some word about some of the tweets he liked. Um, and the reports came out about that, and very very quickly the Leafs uh, put out the statement saying he wouldn't join the Marlies, and that they didn't do their utmost in kind of looking up, looking up his background. Um, uh, you can say what you want about stuff like cancel culture and that. And I think it's been very, very active on Twitter. Something that I really want to ask you guys about is how in the hell did the Leafs not check his Twitter? I did not vet him properly if you're going to bring him on. Like, it is the first thing they teach you in school is yeah. clean your Twitter account. Sometimes I, I get scared to like a tweet that's swearing in it because I'm like, I don't know. I don't know about this. Like, and like, I, I think they said that on our first day. They, it's it's everyone mm-hmm. in every facet of the life nowadays will tell you that. And how I send you world, I send you guys those Danny All Star fifteen tweets. I don't even like them. Yeah. So <laughs> how, how in the world to run? You know, I just admitted uh, it on the internet. Especially with everything that's gone on the past couple of years, with like looking at like the draft, like the Mitchell Miller and Logan Mayu stuff has been like, listen, do your damn research and make the right decision here. Especially for the Leafs, that I think for the most part have been a very like good forward thinking organization. Um, a bit of a mess. Um, I, I, really messing up here, Toronto. I will say. Yeah, it wasn't a uh, fantastic 
look because from this is purely from what I've read about the way I guess Dubis has run the organization since to the ground he left because okay. I'm baghead actually the, I'm, I'm baghead yeah, I, I wouldn't even be surprised um, let's separate <laughs> let's separate the on and like ice. it's not the it's not I I don't mean the on the ice stuff but yeah. like the off the ice stuff not that he's he wants them to be prim and proper per se. Like, I, I don't know what the word word would be. He's like, he makes them a good, like he did the sick kids commercials in like the middle of the night rain. Yeah. Like, they're a good organization. Morally is what you can say, which is a lot more than others. I mean, when yeah, Matthews that's, isn't that's, getting arrested. Yeah. That's the, that's the word. That's the, that's the word I would have, um, would have used, I guess. Out of a speechless. He makes them. Uh, he he, may, he I mean, wants his players fair. to be um, active I mean, in the community. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing, Adam? Um, I mean, well, to be fair, he, yeah, that's more on Matthews for not telling the team. Yeah, that was. Yeah. That's that uh, whole separate um, conundrum. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. I, yeah, I just, the guy hasn't even had a chance to do his job yet, but I will not get up on that argument before I'm called a a flurry of things. But, you know, I did kind of wish he would have been able to have the job just for the fact that, you know, we see farms, so many texts, sorry, popular guy, you see how... You see how, like, it just, I think it would have been good. Unfortunately, circumstances dictate otherwise. So, you know, it happens, whatever, tough luck. But it would have been good to have um, Dusty around a lot closer to Jack Campbell, especially considering that the Marlies and the Leafs, they really do go hand in hand. Like, they're the closest affiliate organized, organization affiliate um, in the league. I mean, they use the same practice facilities. They do like it's. It's not far fetched to say that, um, and because we know, we know that you know Jack Campbell can have one bad game, and he can be really, really hard on himself. He could really, like I know he's worked on it a lot, but if he loses a game, he's it's hard. So it would have been nice to have that common, common kind of presence that helped him there, but uh, you know. What can you do, right? Uh, and last thing we're going to mention here, the all or nothing Amazon series on the Leafs uh, has been slated to release on October 1st. So yeah. watching that sort of teaser trailer, there was that thing of, oh yeah, we lost again. I'm going to be really mad if they gloss over the loss and don't set it up as the biggest heartbreak that's ever happened. Because that's, that's, that is the kicker, right? Like they need to build up to that. Because that's what people are going to want to see. Like, uh, no offense, I could care less about Justin Hall golfing in the back of his, uh, wherever he is. Oh, knocking balls into the neighbor's yard. <laughs> like, I don't care. I want the heartbreak. I want the five one. I want them to build Toronto up. Like, like I want them to set up like the five one loss to the Sens, right? Like, uh, like, the, like the comeback the Sens have. And then, like, from yeah, there, I they, remember. Like, you don't build. have to remind me. And they go no for the listeners. I mean, were, were we watching that? I yeah. hope. Do we have a viewing party for that? Get out of here. Let Adam finish. Yeah. So, like, there was the. I want them to build it and build it and build it. Do we it. have a viewing party for that? <laughs> I'm going to run. I'm sorry. Home. Build it and build it and build it. Continue. Please. And it's like, oh, they may lose game one, but Tavares goes down and they rally and they rally and they rally. And I want them to. I want this to be done right. Because. Like, if they follow the drive to survive formula, this is going to help so much for this game. I just don't mm-hmm. want them to just kind of – I want them to do this right is all I'm saying. I mean, if, if I'm not the bl- depressed by the end of it, they've done it wrong. That's, yeah. That's how I'll put it. Same. Even though I'm not a Leafs fan. You're not going to watch it anyway, <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm not. I'll probably watch it. I think I like no. – just because I like sports documentaries. Oh, like The Last Dance. That's legitimately. That's great, though. That's really good. What? Last dance. It's really good. And the Magic Johnson one coming out. 
yep. as written on the TSN website, but by Mike Jagasar. Had to quick plug in there. I mean, no, I mean, you're right. If it doesn't have you with like, well, not obviously not Adam. With Adam, if it doesn't have Adam going, just jumping for joy watching it, then it isn't going well. If it doesn't have Alex like in tears, talking himself off the ledge, then it didn't do, it, it did a disservice. But I, uh, there's been so much hype around it, right? Mm-hmm. Like so much hype all year, despite obviously not being a show, able to show us anything. So, yeah, I'll pro- I'll check it out for sure. I think there was a tweet like, if somebody says they're not going to watch this, they're lying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're so lying. Sure. I'm also interested to see what, like, some of the interviews are going to be like. Like, there's that clip of Kyle Duba saying, my patience is going. Obviously, that's probably during the regular season. My patience is going, too. Like, where when Toronto's patience that? is gone. I wonder, like, where's that meeting? Like, that has to be preseason, right? Or something like that. I'd say not even because of COVID restrictions. Like, when did that meeting happen? Um, I'm just trying to think. There was a stretch. They, they didn't play well for a stretch. Or it could be about the power play. Because that the, this clip before that was also about the power play, I think. I can imagine that. I, I heard a stat the other day from, like, March 12th or like the beginning of March to like when they lost, they were like 12 and 120. On Wait, what, what was play. that with the power play? What about the power play? Are you what asked about the power play? Didn't everything, work. everything. Joe Thornton was the best power play scorer on the team. Jumbo Actually, Joe was, on was power play one. Yeah, he was with Wayne Simmons at one point. I just hope they don't hold back. You know what I mean? Like, I hope yeah, it's no. what we normally expect from hockey, right? Like, I want a clip of Marner when he when he had, um, when had they were on the PK and, he, and he, he delayed the game. I want them to then cut to an, like, a classic sort of drive to survive thing where it's like, you know, when they, like, ask Hulkenberg about, like, so what do you think of your relationship with Ricardo? And he just, like, it's good. And he's yeah, smart. Yeah. And it cuts, like, to drunkenly, like, Ricardo yelling Hulkenberg's name. I want stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, I want them to, like, I want the emotion from this thing. Do it right. <laughs> Do it right. Exactly. Um, anything else we want to touch on? Yeah, we didn't talk about Verana today. We didn't talk about Pionk. There's enough. We've been going too long. But anything- Yeah, no, that Jacob Rana signing, I guess if we're getting into that is, uh, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> the best even strength scorers in the league. Doesn't that get enough. Sure. Underrated. I don't have anything else to say about this documentary. Okay. That's going to be great. That's uh, that's right before my birthday. So um, that's going to be nice. Um, oh, yeah. I remember you have a late birthday. Yeah. We both you seem like one of those people. Yeah. You made this joke to Alex. <laughs> so we're, Alex and I are both October children. Alex, you're like the tell. Show, right? 27th. 27th. Well, that's everything. Um, hopefully, Daniel's okay, and uh, you know, feel better, out. Dan. He's not sick. He's doing stuff at work, but um, feel better, Dan. <laughs> about Minnesota, um, Mike. Thanks for coming on, as always. Um, thanks for having me. Coming on, uh, we'll link to all your stuff, as always. Congratulations on all the TSN stuff, by the way. Always. Thank cool. you very much. Um, including your thinking getting to the uh, front page. That was pretty sick. Thank you. We have a very big thing to discuss too. What are we going to do for viewing parties next year? Um, what do you mean? Because Alex, are, I think you're going to have to watch them alone, man. That's okay. I was 30 seconds behind, so it actually makes it. I thought he was going to go the kind route and be like, so, you know, the world made me think maybe we're going to hang out. And instead he's just like, no, you guys are going to, I'm going to leave. Yeah. Because we'll, no, be, we'll all be in the city again we'll, for a round. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll see. Yeah, no, no, I only watch Rangers games. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 it. That's what I guess. Come watch a Rangers game with me by any means. Yes, but Montreal's home opener are against the Rangers, so. Oh. I mean, I'm probably going to it, so I won't be able to talk to you. Okay, not a big deal or anything, right? <laughs> did you did you did you did you catch the not a big deal there, yeah. Alex? I I heard it. Not a big deal. Yeah. Cool guy. Okay. Good um, shooter. Thanks for listening. As always, everyone voice said great platform. Check out on the show, wherever you listen to your podcast brought to you uh, by Podgo. Yeah. Um, we really need to do a new thing for that because we did not recently join his member. It's been a solid hundred episodes. Um, beside that, uh, 
Check out Dan's stuff for the Hockey Riders, um, and I up on their gubbins, Alex's blog, my YouTube channel, um, all that kind of stuff. The show socials as well, especially the YouTubers and the show audio stuff. See Mike's beautiful jerseys uh, and his reaction when seeing that I had Phil Dino making the Canadian roster uh, for the Olympics. It's really funny because you didn't see it at first, and then all of a sudden when I was explaining my goalies, I just saw you go. <laughs> yeah, I was literally like... You moved up from your seat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. It's like that moment... It's like when you gotta start focusing when you're playing video games. You're like, yeah, and you, like, and you it's about to it's get like real. when you realize it's a level of Halo with the flood, and you're like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> especially, uh, especially Halo One. God, that's a scary mission. Beside that, uh, we'll the see. library. Yes, the uh, no, 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 not even the library. But even though, but when you play the library, you're like, great, I got two hours of my life to just waste here. <laughs> um, beside that, we'll see you guys whenever. We're planning on having some people on, maybe do an F1 episode if we can get some certain people on as well. Yeah. Um, and we will see everyone the next time we record. Training camp's not far away all of a sudden. So That's true. Um, thank you for listening and goodbye.